Check one, check two. Hey guys, what's going on right now? Justin Zoris outside Centennial College. We got a hot show coming up. It is the last show of the season, of course. So we're gonna kick it off with a huge blast. We got lots going on. We got Diet Coke, we got the homeless, and we also got a slam poet that's coming up right now in the studio. So let's go check that out. Come on. Yeah, Justin, Justin. Go. Kios. I'm sadder than I'm better than anybody. So this is why I don't write letters to Sant anymore. I don't write letters to Sant anymore because if I was to write him telling truth like the world started dying when we figured we could hold him in our palms or that gunning down our reflection seemed to be a way to problem solve, we'd only get lumps of coal. And I want to say that just to write is worth the waste of time and precious ink, okay. but I won't. I'm thinking though, I can lie in these letters and say, Santa, Santa, everything's fine. In these letters, tell him how unity like this never loved the ones behind, those who inspired these letters, those who understood and stood behind minds not being defined and then died without real reason as to why I should lie, but I can't. I don't write letters to Sant anymore because his gifts are wrapped in plastic, crafted by small hands, bounded by lack of options of this is what they were born to do. But these are children. They're not elves from his workshop. They're from the sweatshops in South and Asian communities, developing countries. What? Made in China. What happened to the North Pole? I don't write letters to Sant anymore, even though the naive child of me begs me to believe because it's all about the present, present, present. Yes. Not recognizing the hard work that made sure we even had a tree. Or could it be because he doesn't feed me mentally or others like me who breathe? Those who grind 12 to 12 to make their different ends meet his still dream about providing more than pacification for children with candy that love nothing more than rot teeth. Those who walk the walk. Those who see that some might need things we wouldn't even think to say we even wanted because we already have them. They're called necessities. I don't write letters to Santa anymore. Do you? Have you heard the children cry because sitting on Santa's lap just got uncomfortable? All they want for Christmas is their innocence back. From anywhere it was thought to be safe. Or maybe just moms and pops to stay together, a little brother or sister, or cure, a chance, a happy happenstance. But when sense did these things start coming in boxes? I don't write letters to Santa anymore. And I'm asking, if I were to, who would I send them to? The one who's high on spirit because their bottle's low on booze? The one handing out coupons for the one o'clock photo shoot. The one being ignored on a soapbox preaching truth. The one created by a corporation to help sell coke to the youth. The Santa robbing banks and houses. The one kissing your mom with their hand down his trousers. I don't write letters to Santa anymore. And why would I? He can't be what the seeds of the seven continents need. He won't set us free of medication and the money from the grips of the greedy. He won't give us peace from war. What about the children in no-fly zones? How do they get their presence? Or police brutality? Or a way to see through tyrannical governments in the sky taking over countries in the name of democracy? But I have seen their smiles. On side of misshapen faces, on pages flipped through like world vision stations because anything sometimes seems better than nothing at all. I went to parades in his name and that did shit for me. I stayed up late with a tray of milk and cookies in a chimney's home and honestly, if I saw anyone coming through my window in the dead of the night now, let's just say I know better. I wrote letters like so many others and they only got returned to my door. And maybe that's why I don't write letters to Santa anymore. The long winter is finally over, and spring has arrived. Now, Toronto's least favorite feature, the roadway pothole, has emerged. They cause numerous problems each year, whether it is pop tires, bent rims, or damage to your car. They are a major road hazard. Peter Webrignowski of Bike Zone at 501 Lakeshore Road is an avid cyclist. He rides his bike every day of the week. He met with me to discuss his view on the pothole situation in Toronto. It seems like certain areas get a lot more maintenance than others. The more as you get out of the city, it does start posing problems. There's not too much work done. Peter is not alone in his plight. 
Many citizens of Toronto are feeling the same tensions. We've certainly received a lot of potholes and I've gone into a few and I haven't been happy about it. I don't think the city has half a clue where half the problems are. It would be difficult for them to fix them in, in that respect. We've had a pretty bad winter so I imagine there's a lot of work but yeah they're really bad. In reality it's it's really up to the city. In search of answers and explanation I met with Miles Curry Toronto's Director of Transportation Services at the North York Civic Centre. Uh, this year we've seen an increase in potholes compared to last year. Um, so we are dealing with potholes on a daily basis all year round, but during the last three to four weeks we've increased the number of crews significantly to about 100 staff or 35 crews. This year we've repaired 52,000 to date. They need some website or something where people can report potholes and they'll get people out uh, fixing them faster. Mm -hmm. There is a number that you can call to report a pothole. It's 416-599-9090. Hit the pound key and dial extension 164. I'm here on Hillside Avenue in the community of Mimico in southern Etobicoke. Now this street here is riddled with potholes. We're going to call in and see if the city will do anything about it. The city promises to do a five-day pothole fill rule. Toronto City Councilor Glenn DeBearmaker stated to the media that if you report a pothole to the proper authorities, within five days it will be filled. Hi, I'd like to report a pothole. I, I think it's a realistic goal. Um, based on our track record, we are responding to pothole calls within five days. We always like to hear from the citizens. So if a citizen drives over a pothole, we'd like them to let us know about it. I think my alignment might have gone off, so have to get that checked out. They obviously put a lot of tires out of balance when they impact them. They can also damage rims, suspension mm -hmm. parts. Yeah, we've, we've seen a lot of problems here. Um, more just the fact that uh, on a lot of major streets, you do get a lot of people that unfortunately get squeezed into, some, into a situation like that between either a car or the curb. Uh, it, it does pose a problem. Um, it does cause a lot of damage too. It's just it's one of those situations sometimes you just can't avoid because it just it comes up so quickly and you really have no idea. I think we need to build our roads better for our climate and that means I think when they're redoing surfaces they've got to look at what they put underneath and preferably looking long term they should be doing concrete roads and not paved roads. We take action daily to repair the potholes which generally involves crews with a hot asphalt mix. Long-term strategy is to resurface and reconstruct roads, which the city is doing on a regular basis. We do have a, a backlog of approximately 300 million, which we are dealing with every year. Because of the bad winter, Toronto's roadways have become as much of a city icon as the Toronto Transit Commission. We're here again on Hillside Avenue. It is now April 21st, five days after we reported the potholes on this street to the City of Toronto. And as you can see, they have not yet been filled. However, progress is happening. The City of Toronto has filled over 50,000 potholes this year, and the number continues to grow. If you'd like to report a pothole, please remember to call 416-599-9090, hit the pound key, and dial extension 164. Coming to you from South Etobicoke, this is Kyle Sirowitz. Let's head back to the journal. What a riveting performance, don't you think? That was spoken word artist Truth Is, and we will have an interview with her later on in the show, so keep it locked. That was also a great piece from Kyle Sirowitz. Again, that number for pothole damage is 416-599-9090. If you know that there is a pothole that needs filling, give it a call. Though there are potholes, you know, they're everyday pro problems, you know, they eventually get fixed, though. And after a certain amount of time, usually a couple months, max, you know, but what happens if there's an everyday problem that would go on for about 25 years? Protesters lined along the streets of Toronto getting the word out for a free Tibet. A uh, campaign to end the Chinese occupancy in Tibet. Danielle Jarrett Fish will tell us more about the issues and what people are doing in our own backyard to fill this worldwide pothole. Check it out. Yeah. 